For the safety of your smile, use Peptodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Peptodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. are wonderful people, and mine is the darling of them all, if you'll permit her daughter to say so. You see, I just received a package from her with six jars of my favorite blueberry preserves. When Mother vacuum packs those berries, I don't care how long they stay in the jar. When you open them, they're as young and sweet as the day they were first picked. Which reminds me of my roommate, Irma Peterson. That pretty head of hers must also be a vacuum because although she is 24 years old, her brain is still as young and sweet as the day she was born. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I love her. I, I wouldn't know what to do without her. It, it's just that there are times when... Well, the other day, for instance, I was reading the paper about the heavy plane traffic at LaGuardia Field, and I said... Irma? Yes, Jane? It says here that a plane takes off and lands every two minutes. Isn't that terrific? Two minutes? That's silly. Where can anyone go on such a short trip? <laughs> See what I mean? Well, today is Saturday, and we usually have the afternoon off. But Irma hasn't come home yet, and I can't understand it. Oh, well, maybe her boss, Mr. Clyde, has her doing some extra work at the office. Miss Peterson. Yes, sir. That letter to Cloverleaf Aviation, did you file it under C or L or A? Under D. Under D? <laughs> Miss Peterson, that filing system of yours is... is well, maybe I'm crazy, but I can't see how clover or leaf or aviation can fit under D. Of course it does. What do aviators do? They fly. And what kills flies? DDT. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Simple, Mr. Clyde? You certainly are. <laughs> now, would you mind getting the letter for me? I need the information for my income tax report. All right. Are. Thank you, Miss Peterson. I'd like to see our book on office expenditures. Uh, here you are, Mr. Clyde. Thank you. Let me see. Six hundred and forty dollars for postage stamps and life savers. Yes, I always use them together. What do you mean? Well, you see, I can't stand the taste of glue, so when I have to lick a stamp, I put my tongue through the little hole in the life saver, and the stamp doesn't taste so bad. <laughs> I have a friend in Washington. Maybe the government will flavor them for you. <laughs> now, this next item. One electric fan, $23. One fountain pen, $15. Repair of same fountain pen, $8. This I don't get. Well, you said you wanted your name on everything, so I tried to write property of Mr. Clyde on the, fa on the fan with the fountain pen, but I forgot to shut it off first. <laughs> that explains the $28 for new wallpaper, I suppose Oh, no, that was when you threw the inkwell at me Because I painted your chair and you sat on it Before I had a chance to tell you about it Oh, no, no <laughs> uh, Are those things deductible, Mr. Clyde? No, but I'm putting you down as a total loss <laughs> Now, let me see Entertainment at employees' party $120 And a grand for fixing the judge Miss Peterson, where did you get that? A grand for fixing the judge? I copied it right from this slip of paper you gave me. Let me see that. That's a pan for mixing the fudge. <laughs> Look, Miss Peterson, before you get me put in jail, do me one little favor. Go home! Well, all right. I think I've given you enough help. Goodbye. <laughs> Jane? Oh, hello, 
sweetie. I expected you home early. What kept you? Oh, I was helping Mr. Clyde with his income tax. Jane, hmm. maybe we ought to do ours because the earlier you file, the sooner you get your refund. Say, you've got something there. Maybe by doing it now, we'll get the refund in time for our vacation. Where's that little black book we keep a record of our expenses in? Oh, here it is. Well, let me see. Irma, what's this notation of $1.75? Oh, that was for having the hem of my black silk dress lowered when the new look became popular. Oh, I see. And this $1.50 the next day? Uh, that was for shortening it again when Al told me it was a shame to hide such pretty legs. <laughs> Here's another $1.75 for the same dressmaker. Oh, well, that was when my girlfriend, Amber Lipscott, told me not to pay any attention to Al, uh, so I had it lowered again. And um, this $1.50 and $1.75 on the same day? Well, I read in a fashion magazine that skirts were being shortened, so I had it shortened again. Uh, then I happened to see the date on the magazine was 1925, so I... Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, Irma, what's this $2 for? Fringe. Fringe? Yes, for the dress. I got tired of it all, so I cut off the sleeves and made it into a Spanish shawl for the piano. <laughs> Thank you, Hattie Carnegie. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little darlings figuring out their income tax. <laughs> One with a blank in her hand, the other with a blank in her head. <laughs> oh, Kropotkin, all the time with your little jokes. <laughs> Tell me, girls, how are you making out? Well, we just started, but I I'm having a little trouble with Irma's return. She's got Al down as a medical deduction because I told her that every time I look at him, he makes me sick. <laughs> Well, I myself have a few deductions, like entertainment in my room. Entertainment? Entertainment in your room? Yes. Last year, Mrs. O'Reilly bought me a second-hand gas stove, a bathtub, and an icebox. So the first night, the gas stove leaked and put me to sleep. The bathtub had a crack in it, and the water covered the floor. The door on the icebox sprung open and froze the water. And so it shouldn't be a total loss. I went ice skating. <laughs> How can you put that down as entertainment? Uh-huh. Well, Mrs. O'Reilly came in, she fell down, and I laughed for half an hour. <laughs> well, you've got your troubles, Professor, but honestly, I can't make head or tail of this form. I'd better go in the bedroom where I can concentrate. Excuse me. Gee, I hope I get the same refund I got last year. But I think the government took advantage of me, Professor. Do I look 65? Sixty-five? Of course not, I'm a darling. Well, then why do I have to pay Social Security? <laughs> you don't understand, darling. This is to take care of you after you're 65. Oh, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Why not? Well, I think by that time, Al may have a job. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it. Now, if you'll excuse me, Irma, Mrs. O'Reilly wants me I should fix the lock on her trunk. Maybe there's some way I can get her to hold the cover down from the inside. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, yes, I'm very happy that you got the raise. What, you want to celebrate? What? Oh, please, you're so excited, I can't understand what you're saying. Huh? Get the sitter for the children and meet you in front of the Roxy Theater? Oh, gee, I'd like to, but you have the wrong number. <laughs> oh, but I'm glad you got the raise. Uh, goodbye. Well, Irma, I have your income tax returns all figured out, and I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Oh, Jane, do you mean I won't get enough back for my vacation? It's worse than that, honey. You owe $20. I owe them. That's right, sweetie. Well, there must be a mistake. I, I never borrowed any money from them. <laughs> Look, honey, I've gone over it carefully, and I'm sure that's what you owe. Jane, do you think I ought to pay it? Well, yes, sweetie. Or they'll change your name to a number, and you'll never remember who you are. <laughs> now, you sign your form while I run down to the corner and get something for dinner. Uh, let's see. Uh, two times eight is twelve. Subtract no dependents. 
That still leaves 12, plus depreciation on furniture. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Chicken, baby, why so glum? Oh, it's my income tax. I have to pay $20. $20? Yes, just because they're putting a new balcony on the White House, why should I have to pay for it? <laughs> I'll never be invited. Yeah, well, personally, I think it's a crime. Especially when I was counting on borrowing that 20 to put across my new deal. A new deal, Al? Yeah, yeah it's, it's poker chips made from pressed onions. <laughs> so when a guy comes home to his wife, he can say his eyes are red because he was crying all night at the bedside of a sick friend. <laughs> oh, but, but Al, I have to give the money to the government. Oh, they ain't entitled to it. After the wonderful things women have done through history, I think the least we can do is not tax them. What do you mean, Al? Well, I think it's unfair. You have a good argument to give Jane, chicken. Was it all in vain when Pocahontas saved the neck of Captain John Smith? Do we forget to sing the praises of, of, of Betsy Ross, who sewed the stars and stripes? And what of Florence Nightingale and, and Martha Washington, who worked shoulder to shoulder with the father of our country? You're right, Al. Yeah, take Joan of Arc or, or Barbara Fritchie, who said, Shoot if you must this old gray head, but spare this flag. Did all these famous women make their sacrifices knowing that the women that followed in their footsteps was going to get soaked 20 bucks by the government on their income tax? No, 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 Al. I'm going to get out there and... What do I do, Al? <laughs> you got to tell Jane to stay out of it. And then I'll get a friend of Joe's to do your income tax return over again. So you will not have to pay that $20. All right, Al. I'll tell Jane everything you said. Yeah, and don't be scared of it. Remember, you're a human being, too. Oh, Al, you say the nicest thing. <laughs> I'll tell Jane it's unfair to women. Good, chicken. We'll be back later. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Irma. Well, what was Al in such a hurry for? He almost knocked me down in the hall. Jane, are you a woman? What? Then you've got a fine way of showing it. Sweetie, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, don't pretend. Did Pocahontas carry this nation into bars while Betsy Ross sewed stars and stripes on John Smith? <laughs> Did they shoot the gold gray head of Martha Washington so she would walk shoulder to shoulder with Barbara Fritchie? <laughs> Irma, what are you babbling about? You know very well. Did the father of our country neck with Joan of Arc <laughs> just to hear Florence Nightingale sing? What? Oh, never mind, I'm leaving. I'm doing what Al said. What Al said? Yes, I know he may have made some mistakes in his lifetime, but this is the biggest thing he's ever done. Don't think that you are safe from film. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film, and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. But remember, Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. True, but Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. That's right. But Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste. Because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The paste for you. Well, I am going out of my mind. Why? Because I have to do things the hard way. I have to try to explain to Irma about income taxes. And what makes me so angry is that I should know better. 
Because I remember the time Irma came home with a pair of red fox furs that she'd bought from a man in a dark alley for $5. And when I said, Irma, the paint isn't supposed to come off genuine red fox furs, Irma said, Well, the man who sold them to me explained that the foxes were wounded and the red stuff was mercurochrome. <laughs> Then there was the time when the dentist told her he'd have to extract one of her eye teeth. And Irma said, I wish you wouldn't take my, out my eye tooth. I like to see what I'm eating. <laughs> see what I mean about common sense? The same thing happened today when I tried to explain why she must pay $20 to the government on her income tax. But she ran out in a huff, and now I have no idea what she's up to. Come in. Hello, Janie. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Won't you sit down? Thank you, Janie. I'm a little bit worried about Irma. Oh? She stopped in to see me about her income tax, and I've never seen her so confused. I gave her one of the donuts I just baked, and when she opened the door to leave, she handed me back the donut and said, I'm sorry I broke your doorknob. <laughs> Yes, Al told her she didn't have to pay any tax And she's trying to get out of it Well, of course, the tax is a problem to us uh, single girls <laughs> So I hinted to the professor that married people don't have to pay much tax <laughs> And uh, what did the professor say? Well, he started to mutter something in his native tongue I thought it sounded like I'll think it over, but then suddenly he started throwing things at me. Well, I think he's being silly. Besides the companionship, if he married you, you could declare everything as community property. I told him that, but he says with my figure everyone would move out of the community. Well, Mrs. O'Reilly, you've got your hands full with the professor, and I've got mine full with Irma. Come in. It's only me again. I'm looking for the... Oh, there you are, Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> yes. And now that you found me, what have you got to say? <laughs> Don't get coy with me, Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> I am telling you for the last time, either you tell Mrs. Horowitz next door to me to get rid of her television set, or you got to plaster up my walls. <laughs> what are you talking about? It is not easy to go to sleep when Anne Sutton is looking on me and singing, Come to me, my melancholy baby. <laughs> oh, Professor, quit complaining or I'll charge you extra rent for having a floor show. Uh, uh, <laughs> Professor, have you seen Irma? Yeah, I saw her just before she went out, Janie. She was muttering something about Betsy Ross waving Barbara Fritchie out of a window. <laughs> She's still off on that kick. Well, I'd better go out and find her before it's too late. No way, Janie. We'll go with you. Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. I'll take you to see Humphrey Bogart in Knock on Any Door. And this could never be the story of my life, because first, I don't look like Humphrey Bogart, and second, I haven't got a door. <laughs> Good, chicken. With Jane out of the picture, there's no one to interfere. Now, the first thing we do is tear up this form that Jane made out for you. And the next thing we do is get in touch with this friend of Joe's. He knows more shortcuts with income tax forms than a two-story man being chased by the cops. Oh, that's swell, Al, but I hope we aren't doing anything dishonest by not paying the $20. Chicken, loopholes are put there for citizens to use. <laughs> See, it, it's just like the unemployment office. I could find a job. But who am I to destroy a great American institution? Oh, Al, you're so loyal. But I feel so terrible about it. What do you I... mean? They won't miss your $20. Well, I understand there are a lot of dollar-a-year men down in Washington, and I'd hate to put 20 of them out of work. Chicken can only think of ourselves. And there's only one thing to do. Who are you calling, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al. Got a problem. Understand you have a man who's good on income tax. What? Huh? He's very busy this time of year? Oh, he also changes numbers on license plates. <laughs> uh, see what you mean, Joe, but this is important. Where can I reach him? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Thanks, and so long, Joe. Well, chicken, we're all set. Joe has given me the address of a guy. 
And when he gets through with your income tax returns, you won't owe the government a nickel. Oh, Al, that's wonderful. Where's his office? Uh, his office? <laughs> well, you see, Chicken, he's a very busy man. Always on the move. Right now, he's doing his work in the alley in back of a Chinese laundry. <laughs> that's a blind for a bookie joint. But, Al, uh, isn't a bookie a bad thing? Oh, no, 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 Chicken. It's uh, uh, baby talk. Oh. Yeah, just like a child says mommy for mom and daddy for dad. They say bookie for book. <laughs> it's a, a, a kid's library. Yeah. Oh, I understand now. Sure. Well, here, Chicken, here's the address. The guy's name is Frank. Just tell him Joe sent you. All right. Goodbye, Al. Look, lady, this is the fifth time you walked by staring at me. What's on your mind? the man my boyfriend described, except that you don't have a sailor suit. Uh, is your name Frank? Yeah, I'm Frank, but what goes with a sailor suit business? Well, I thought you'd be wearing one because Al said you spent a lot of time up the river. <laughs> <laughs> Look, lady, ain't got no time for jokes. What do you want to see me about? Well, Joe sent me. Oh, I see. Want to be smuggled across the border? No, I, I came to see you about my income tax. Oh, pardon me, got too many sidelines. Uh, let's see, got a few tax forms right with me. Just write your name here, fill in the amount of your income, leave the rest to me. All right. Uh, my girlfriend Jane figured it out once today, but when she got through, I was going to owe the government $20. Uh, do you think I'll have to pay them anything when you make it out? Lady, when I get through filling this form out for you, they will probably put you on a pension for the rest of your life. <laughs> now, let's see, item number one, section one, paragraph... <laughs> Oh, Jane. Chicken back here? Al, I want to talk to you. Where is Irma? Did not think she should pay the tax. So I sent her to see a guy who was an expert in his field, a CPA. CPA? If he's a friend of yours, it probably stands for Certified Public Assassin. <laughs> now, take it easy, Jane. Frank happens to be a friend of Joe's. Oh, that's even worse. Al, if you've gotten that girl mixed up with anything illegal, believe me, I'll... Uh... Hello, Jane. Al, honey. Well, chicken, did Frank take care of your income tax problem? Uh, yes, he, he made it out in duplicate, and he's filed the original, and I have the copy right here in this envelope. Hey, you see, chicken, I saved you 20 bucks. Yes, Al, and, and he only charged me $35 for making it out. <laughs> Yipe! Oh, Irma, $35. Well, I, I thought it was kind of high at first, too, Jane, uh, but Frank explained it to me, and it really doesn't cost me that much in the end. Oh, this I gotta hear. How did Frank explain it? Uh, he said I'd have to pay $20, but by paying him $35, I don't lose so much. Uh, you see, uh, $25 from $35 is $15, and $15 from the $20 is only $5 that I actually lose. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? Irma, let me see that form. Oh, here it is. Charity deduction. $15 for French relief, $10 for starving Albanians, and $26 for miscellaneous. Irma, what's that? Well, if the Albanians need help, I guess the miscellaneans need it, too. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this? Oh, no, Al, brace yourself. Huh? Irma has put you down as a dependent. <laughs> a dependent? Chicken, I'm ruined. When the unemployment office hears about this, they'll cut off my source of income. How could you do this to me? But, Al, we all must make sacrifices, like you said, when Betsy Ross went to Washington with Joan of Arc to buy a nightingale for John Smith. Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. 
And remember, film never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent with Irium today. protected from harm by a guardian angel, and it must be true, because the tax office called up the following day and told Irma that she would have to make her returns over again as they were destroying the one she sent in because it was made out on a 1942 tax form. <laughs> and with her luck still holding out, she was able to stop payment on the check she gave to Frank. Right now, we're getting ready for bed. And Irma? Oh, Irma's quite smug about the whole thing. Irma, what are you doing with that pad and pencil? I'm sending in my 1949 tax returns now because they say taxes are going up and I want to pay mine while prices are down. <laughs> well, you know, prices can fall and go down, but me, I'm always up in the air because I live with my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. <laughs> Calamity on the Campus. They had met just outside the library, and she was saying to him, I have thought it over, Jimmy, but I'm going to be busy. That's what she said, what she was thinking. Oh, Jimmy... You could be such a nice guy, but nobody likes you with film on your teeth. Jimmy ought to remember, and you should too, that film makes your teeth look dull. It breeds bad breath, glues acid to your teeth, and film never lets up. So fight it with film-removing Pepsodent. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your help is vitally needed during the present American Heart Association drive. Give and give generously to the heart campaign in your town or to the American Heart Association, Box 500, New York City. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma, both brought to you by Lever Brothers Company. Wendell Nile speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.